like a, a gin and tonic in one hand <laughs> and my cell phone in the other. I sprinted to the bathroom and right. like emailed him and his assistant mm-hmm. uh, my resume <laughs> then and there. And today on Across the Globe Film Festival, um, we have Joey Napa from ICM Partners. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. So before we dive into that, I just want to start at where it all, you know, happened and where you got your interest for the entertainment industry. Um, yeah, I mean, if you go back to college, well, I went to Elon University and mm-hmm. uh, did not uh, get any scholarship money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my dad said, you have to look for some way of, uh, you know, getting something out of the school. Right. And so there's these fellowship programs. And so I got into the communications fellows program. Mm-hmm. And with that, I had to major in something in the communication school. And really did not want to wake up early anymore for uh, <laughs> broadcast television. Right. Um, and was not really a graphic designer of mm-hmm. any sort. So right. then there was cinema and television arts. And I've always loved movies and television. Um, definitely get the, the inspiration and passion from my grandmother, Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> She's uh, the number one OG woman in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Was she in it? Was like, was she in the entertainment? No, no, or? not at all. Okay, but she has definitely a, a diehard love for film. film. I mean, okay. I was at her place one time and I uh, was playing hooky because I didn't want to go to a hockey game. And uh-huh. she said, "That's fine, <laughs> but we're gonna watch some interesting movies today." And we ended up watching um, Silence of the Lambs. Oh, wow. <laughs> How old were you when you? I was that? ten. <laughs> like. Did that give you nightmares? Well, yeah, or? It definitely <laughs> made me think weirdly <laughs> and desensitized me a lot. Um, yeah, so, yeah, and then, like, in the f- past few years, we'd always go to this independent uh, film theater uh, okay. in my town yeah. and, like, see films there and then go to an Italian restaurant afterwards and talk about it. Um, mm-hmm. So that definitely, like, has churned in, like, my romanticizing of my love for film. It definitely, I think, is sparked through her. Um, yeah, but then at school, I had to major in s- something in communication, so I picked cinema, you know, cinema and television arts, mm-hmm. and it's a uh, great program. I mean, liberal arts, so I got like a mixed bag of everything, producing, screenwriting, um, directing, and then my focus was mostly in uh, documentaries. Gotcha. Um, so learned about the great and ever so wonderful Vena Herzog, <laughs> 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 um, who, yeah, and... Then uh, through Elon, I got to go to Sundance Film Festival mm-hmm. my uh, my junior year of college, which was the best thing that I think has ever happened to me. Right. Um, One of the top film festivals. So <laughs> yeah, you know, the American yeah. Film Festival. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, when I was there, first movie I saw was uh, The Discovery starring Jason Segel. Okay. And sitting right in front of me, granted, like it's in Park City, Utah. I'm from New Jersey. Uh-huh. I saw one of my, in- like, my seventh grade English teacher. No way. Yeah. Small Shout world. out Miss <laughs> Poland. <laughs> Lynn, you yeah. made it for me. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, she's like, why don't you and, like, your friends come to this party tomorrow that my brother-in-law is mm. hosting. And he ended up being, like, a big wig at A&E. And then oh, wow. there's a base. I brought. 10 kids in college to like a fundraising party mm-hmm. and the median age was 50 right. plus. Uh-huh. So I met uh, this guy by the name of Howard Owens who runs this company propagate content mm-hmm. and you know, through crazy connections, kid I played hockey with growing up right. was his uh, roommate in college, mm-hmm. his dad's roommate in college, blah, 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 like one of those things. And he's like, you want an internship? And with like a, a gin and tonic in one hand <laughs> and my cell phone in the other, I sprinted to the bathroom and right. like emailed him and his assistant mm-hmm. uh, my resume <laughs> then and there. And yeah, I got an internship at Propagate for that summer, going oh, into wow. my senior year in L.A. Did any of your friends get any uh, internships out of that party? or, or No, I, I think I was the only <laughs> one who truly finagled the situation right, no, that's great. without even really knowing I, w- I didn't like go to this thing and be like i'm gonna get an internship right, out of right, this of course. but um yeah just like one of those seizing the moment opportunities um and so yeah and i also met like my mentor i would say this woman uh mm-hmm. andre eastman okay. who uh was a cast the casting director for the godfather oh wow um yeah she is a tiny little badass <laughs> <laughs> standing at a whopping like five two right. um 
Yeah, I just saw her like a couple months ago. She was in L.A. That's crazy. That's my favorite um, movie, go- The Godfather. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been watching it nonstop like, yeah. <laughs> on the holidays. Right, I don't know exactly. why, but <laughs> my dad and I just on repeat. What's your favorite one out of the three? Yeah. I think maybe the second one. The second one, okay. Yeah, a lot, I mean, of, a lot of the Italy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like the flashbacks, too, mm-hmm. of like w- like how he became who he was almost. Yeah. Um, the first one was like a classic. I mean – I think I would go with the first one. The third one was such a, a pile bummer. of garbage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, I was so disappointed. I in don't that. even like going near it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, so yeah, she had a big literal hand in that and putting the people in that film, mm-hmm. and then was also an agent at ICM. So after going then senior year of college, looking for jobs, um, I sent her my resume and she sent it on over to a guy known as Rick Levy, who mm-hmm. run uh, the general counsel at um, ICM. Okay. And uh, to, to her, sh- he was Little Rick. But right. then to me, he's like the head dog right. of the company. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's how I got my foot in the door. And mm-hmm. yeah, I've been at ICM since uh, May of 2018. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. Um, so was it in college or I saw that you were also a production assistant as well? Yeah, so I... Um, you know, one of those things like just ask people for work and okay. stuff that you're passionate about. So right. my mom's like tennis partner mm-hmm. um, <laughs> ran a small pro- like commercial production company. Okay. And so through her, I was able to get on like a, a Hasbro um, mm-hmm. like toy commercial. Oh, wow. Um, and then like through that job, it was just like get another job from the people on that set. Gotcha. So yeah, like uh, in high, I was in high school, um, which was the coolest thing. That's why I love New York City so much. Like, mm-hmm. it feels right. like home because right. I've been lost countless times with no <laughs> f- no battery on my phone. Like the good oh, old God. days, right. I've like been in Coney Island yeah. running around like Holy with shit. no signs in English. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> where the hell am I? Yeah, <laughs> and, wow. I looking for imagine myself yeah. in that situation. I'd be freaking out. Yeah, I, like, I how mean, how did you get home after that? Like, what? well, so it was like in the middle of the day. The like, court like production coordinator was like, "Hey, we need like these props." Um, and so they needed vinyl. I'll never forget it. Like, they needed vinyl lettering mm-hmm. to like, like make a sign on like a wall or something. And so I'm like, "All right, like probably at like a printing shop, like you would print it on a shirt, right. or like." an art supply shop Uh so i find this like t-shirt shop in coney island (laughs) and i get there and like my phone dies i'm like all right i'm just gonna put on airplane mode for now and it's at like a residential like apartment building and it's under it's at the bottom like you know the little stairwell going up Mm -hmm. it was underneath and i go in and it was just like two old orthodox jewish men behind a folding table with a buttload of shirts around them right. <laughs> that like they, they like had vinyl lettering on the shirts right. but i just needed the letters right. and i'm like hey uh guys um i need like vinyl lettering and right. they're like we have the shirts <laughs> like, and i was like right right this the like the print on the shirts is like just the shirts right. and like <laughs> It was the sketchiest thing ever. Like this was totally like a front for like <laughs> some like shady shit. Yeah, because totally it's just like a pop up table right, and like right. a cash register. Right. And then right. these two guys, like there must have been like some hidden door behind them. Right, or right. Something. They're like, oh shit, we have this little ki- like we have this kid here. Yeah. Like, get, get so then like <laughs> I leave that place, I go back to the set. And I'm like, I don't have it. He's like, all right, we'll try another place. So then I end up, and it was in Brooklyn. Um, uh-huh. So then I end up going to, uh, I end up going into like Union Square Park area mm-hmm. and find like this Chinese market that like has the vinyl lettering. Right. And then I like mm-hmm. have to get to the subway and it was like far from the subway for some reason. Right. And I stole a city bike. <laughs> like, I, I'm such an awful person. For this. Like, How did you steal a city bike? I went down the line, just like uh, slowly yanking uh, each seat, <laughs> and the last one, I like kid you not, yeah. out of a freaking movie, like was uh, loose, and no I rode way. this thing like a mile and a half Holy shit. to the subway, and then got back to set. And by the time I got back, they didn't even fucking need it. <laughs> 
it's just like <laughs> that's a movie right there yeah man. That's yeah a comedy. And, yeah shit. and there's a that's few hilarious. other sets that i was on were just like wild like errands like that happened mm. um, yeah but so i got a, my set experience in high school wow, on yeah. these like commercial stuff mm-hmm. which told me um yeah i hate working on set <laughs> right, <laughs> um, especially at the bottom of the rung right right um, of course yeah yeah there was times it was like working like double time and a half like oh, shit. i was on a set that was almost 24 and hours that's all, long that's all high school too that's incredible. yeah wow. and like wow yeah the craziest that's one a cool job though like i was working at a restaurant in yeah. cincinnati ohio like, <laughs> like you know in the back of the kitchen right like, I mean, that's pretty cool that you were on set for... It was... Know, well, I had literally no idea yeah. how I was getting into these scenarios, but mm-hmm. was loving every minute of it. So, yeah. like, just hustling, getting on to the next project. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, Met a lot of awesome. interesting people. Yeah, and I can imagine. Got acclimated with this beautiful right. city. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, after, after all that experience, did you... So, you... I mean, I don't know. You didn't want to stay in New York, though. You wanted to get out, or, like, was that your goal? What it really came down to was, like, when I was in school, like, at Elon. um, Right, like, yeah. It was, like, when I was at Sundance, basically, that's, Mm -hmm. I got an internship then and there in L.A. Right. And Elon has this program, like, the Elon L.A. program. So they just, like, jet set kids out there um, Mm -hmm. and do an internship and a class. And so I got, like, a little preview of life in L.A. during that Mm -hmm. and, like, fell in love. Uh, I'm a total beach bum at heart. (laughs) I surf a lot. Uh And I, like, now live in Venice and, like, a mile and a half from the beach. So I feel like an absolute spoiled kid. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, But, did like, when you were a PA in high school, did you want to stay in New York? Like, or were you, like, because you were lived in jersey no you're like i kind of want to try i wanted to get, yeah i want to get out get there out, okay. because i always like gotcha. new york feels like home to me and i know it's right. always going to be here and i can always come back to it like mm-hmm. to appease my mother i'm like <laughs> i'm gonna be by coastal right, when, right, when right, i make right. it you That's know funny. go yeah. to and fro and i'd yeah, still exactly. like believe in that and want mm-hmm. to do that right. but uh in terms of like full lifestyle i think mm-hmm. la has sucked me into the Right, the right. wonderments of it all. Yeah, I, can, <laughs> I, I actually have a few friends who are about to move out there. They're getting kind of sick of New York, the mm. whole, with the everything COVID, and you know, it's like how it's hurting small businesses. And yeah, everyone's cooped up. Yeah, like everyone's cooped up, and being in the cold and cooped up, I can't imagine. Yeah, so <laughs> everyone's moving out to LA. I, I was I was thinking about making the move too, but so you got you know, all these internships and then you got Sundance and then eventually that led you to, or you got the internship at Sundance that led you to ICM. Um, at ICM, you know, did you, where did you start in the mailroom or? Yep. So okay. start in the mailroom right. and right. Uh, like, it's what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You are in like, so ICM um, is in Century City okay. and has like the top five floors on, mm-hmm. um, yeah, and the, on the bottom of those floors is the mail room, and mm-hmm. so that's where it all goes to, and then right. there's a, a cart for each floor, and each floor is like a different set of departments. Um, so like the top one is the motion picture and TV literature mm-hmm. uh, department, then the 34th is like the glitz and glam, beautiful right. lobby. That's where <laughs> the talent department is, mm-hmm. the actors and actress representation. Gotcha. Then 33, which is where I work now, is like kind of like the mishmash. There's the branding department. There's my department. What it, is your department? My department's the uh, international independent um, film sales or packaging department, we call it. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah, so basically we do film festival sales and – basically work in every rung of the agency Mm -hmm. i think and that's why i I really love it um so it's like we represent like a lot of writers a lot of musicians directors producers Mm -hmm. like the whole gambit and so they come to us to either sell a film or they have an idea for a film Mm -hmm. um they don't know what sort of production company to go to and we connect them maybe with clients of our own or other companies that Mm -hmm. we've worked with in the past um awesome wow yeah it's like agency is like the connector of the entertainment world and then mm-hmm. even in so more so in like my department like we connect the agency with other departments or right. financier production companies mm-hmm. and so, distributors right so uh my next question is you know there at icm um 
what does your typical day look like? I mean, as an assistant, so going back, I guess a little, this will help. Um, so I was in the mailroom for like a month, which mm-hmm. is like pretty quick. Uh, yeah. I what's, think. Yeah. What's the typical like time in the mailroom? You know. I mean, it's so it's starts. all about like getting on a desk, right? right? Um, and how does one get on a desk? You know. You know, you bring that mail around <laughs> and you just talk to the assistants and uh-huh. try and learn about their boss and what they're doing uh-huh. and that type of business. Right. And so for me, I was like absolute eager beaver and like get me out of this mail room right. like right. i'm reading script i would got to read all the scripts um oh, wow. they're like coming in which is exciting but you're like mm-hmm. i want to do more i want to like right. have a little bit more input uh-huh. um and s- be on the floor where it's happening right. and so you talk to assistants and like help them out and give them script coverage uh-huh. or like whatever and then eventually uh Someone's like, yeah, I'm going to go work at Netflix now. My desk is opening <laughs> up. And it's like this yeah. whole like insider information thing of right, like, yo, right. did you hear what desk is opening up on 33 right, or like right. 34? Oh, my God, I've been waiting for that <laughs> desk. Like, um, right, right. So That's I awesome. was like really eager and wanted to get on a desk as soon as possible. Right. And so I started in talent department mm-hmm. um, working for a young covering agent. And so that what that means is like she covers – um, like different studios and uh, mm-hmm. TV networks. Gotcha. Um, and basically talks to the producers there, studio execs there, and then gets their casting mm-hmm. information and then brings it back to the company and says, hey, they have these eight roles in this movie. Mm-hmm. Here's what their character descriptions are. Got it. Um, and then like pitches the company's clients mm-hmm. to them. Okay. Um, so I was in the talent department for about n- 10 months and – wasn't really for me. Um, mm-hmm. I like I love filmmaking and I really love documentaries and I like the, the artistry behind that. Um, yep. And kind of working in the talent department kind of soaked away my love for film because I was just like reading scripts to then like. How pi- fast can you read a script? Like, what's your? Like, uh, this is fast, like so? I don't want to say because yeah. there's people who I need to read their scripts and I <laughs> haven't. <laughs> so I'm kind of slow, but I mean. Yeah. I got a, there's a great app. Um, yeah. <laughs> <There's> a great <laughs> app. It gives you a summary at the end. <laughs> no, I wish. Uh, no, it's, uh, I think it's a like voice word or, um, where basically you just throw the PDF in there and it, like mm-hmm. reads it for you. And okay. I use that to kind of just like keep a time on it. Like I don't have it read to me, but I just like use the kind of like highlight thing well, to go. And yeah. so like, you know, a, a page on a script is a minute in, in the mm-hmm. film or TV right. show. And so, like, it gives you the minute length when you put the script in. Um, so I try and get it done in the script length time. So if it's 120 pages, I should get it done in 120 minutes. Gotcha. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's like however long it takes to watch a movie is how long it should take me to read the script. <laughs> but where I find that time is right. the tough part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I worked in the talent department, and it wasn't, like, for me um, – you know, it's really just like telling people to get to their audition on time and, you know, begging them <laughs> to do that, which I did not like. Right. I wanted to work for people that made films and were like proud of it and like mm-hmm. had this real emotional connection to it. And right. so then I interviewed for my current boss, um, one of my current bosses, mm-hmm. and, you know, he represents uh, some production companies that. Okay. Fr- this one uh, client is uh, Spring Films, and they do like okay. the final financing on all of like Werner Herzog's documentaries. Okay, so wow. one yeah. that just came out on Apple mm-hmm. uh, was Fireball, and so that's like Werner's latest uh, documentary they made with um, Clive Oppen- Oppenheimer, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. That's awesome! Wow. Yeah, Impressive. like people, it, like you know, when you make a documentary, it could be like a year or like ten years, and then right. when you as in, like on the agency side and say like hey we're gonna sell your film like they are so grateful mm-hmm. for that you right. know whereas mm-hmm. sometimes uh you know son of a famous celebrity who's trying to be an actor and you <laughs> give them an audition he's like oh can you push that to the next day it's not that grateful of work right. <laughs> <laughs> right. so uh, i mean when you said when you mentioned film festivals uh would you go before and get their films before to sell or would it be after like it's like kind that? of a whole range. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I one do not go <laughs> as yeah. an assistant, but mm-hmm. so my bosses when they go, I mean, there's multiple kind of like agendas, if right. you will. So there's you know, th- that's where like the new 
talent is mm-hmm. you know like a lot of these um like first uh first director like programming mm-hmm. um so that's like one aspect is trying to sign new new clients um at the festival and then another is selling your clients already films already made films mm-hmm. um and so making like if you have a client who gets a film into a festival then making sure that certain buyers are in in attendance to see it right so the netflix and the hbo's of, of the course. world go and then you know you want to like what i would presume what my bosses do is they go up to them afterwards and start talking about their interest in the film um mm-hmm. and so now like what i see and like because there's been a, a virtual can film festival there's mm-hmm. been virtual toronto um there's going to be somewhat virtual sundance um is like that kind of like excitement and buzz of right. the business and like selling films has mm-hmm. changed where now it's you're emailing people a submission of you know who's the writer director who's in the film mm-hmm. and then a log line and then the vimeo link that'll be open for like 48 hours right as opposed to having that one or two chances at the festival mm-hmm. to see the film mm-hmm. um so yeah that like the purpose of like my department is like going to these festivals trying to sign people and then also trying to sell films um and then also like potentially those clients that we pick up then selling their films after the festival too gotcha and using it kind of like as a a sales tactic Mm -hmm. and being like oh hey it went to sundance and it it won the Mm -hmm. world dramatic competition right as like kind of like an accolade Mm -hmm. um so gotcha and then also do you in your department i guess in your group so you guys do financing um production scripts uh, uh, pretty right, or do you guys work with major studios, or is it mostly just so we're on independent, that's right? yeah, it's independent. Right. Um, okay. and that's like so most of the films that we work on, I would say like max budget is like 15 million, 15 million. Okay. Um, and I'd say like minimum for a studio is like 40. Gotcha. Um, yeah. so that's yeah, that's a big difference. And like, it, I, something I find exciting about our department is you know, like. It's a, a film is mm-hmm. not made by one person. It right. is a team. It it's is a collective team. effort. Yeah. And it's all about like putting those puzzle pieces together. Mm-hmm. And so like even down to the financing, like getting a little bit of money from a production company in, that also has like a financing arm, but then also getting tax incentives from whichever right. maybe state it's being made mm-hmm. in. Um, or then also going to those celebrities, the child celebrities who now want to be a producer and just mm-hmm. invest money into it and right. want to get that executive producer uh, like title at the end. Mm-hmm. So it's that I, I like that part, and that's something that we do a lot is you know getting money in different ways in bundles right. um, to support and create Got the films of our clients. Okay. Yeah. So what's, like, what's the hardest thing about your job, you think? I feel like I've been speaking more so from, like, an agent standpoint. Um, gotcha. But, like, my job is, like, you know, aiding any of the endeavors of their job. So right, So it's, like, course. setting up phone calls. Mm-hmm. It's, like, if setting up virtual meetings or, at, at the time, like, actual meetings, um, helping. I mean, it, it's, I think the kind of scary and really cool part about my job mm-hmm. is, you know, like, having a taste and having an understanding of, like, this script sucks ass because of this reason right or this script is really good because it's going to reach this type of audience and that's the type of stuff that people want to see right now Mm -hmm. so i think that is something that like through time being at the agency i've become more comfortable with and like my taste and like what i think deems like you know a, a viable like entity Mm-hmm. of whether oh hey the script is really good we should you know track this right. director and maybe try mm-hmm. and sign them or hey this uh documentary i watched uh is really good we should try and hop on board and be the sales representative and right. sell it to to hulu or something right. like that because like that's i mean i think that's where you know your real talent is as an agent if you can actually watch something and say okay this is good or this is bad 
I mean, you know, and that's, and I think that's also the scary part because what happens if you can't, you know, pick the yeah. good stuff and the bad, you can't separate the two then, you know, Definitely. I mean, you might that's... have to pick a new career, but I mean, I think, I mean, I think you made a good point about like, you know, splitting up the two mm. and understanding where you have to go with each one and, and whatnot. And I mean, I think that's like one of the hardest part I would imagine yeah. as like an agent being like, like, Hey. You know, this is not very good, but you have to give mm. them a reason, you know. And I think, like, like, especially for my bosses, like, they have to take on projects that are, you know, another agent in the company's clients mm-hmm. work. And, you know, sometimes they don't they don't jive with that. Like, right. they don't, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. my, my guy boss has to, like, sell a rom-com starring so-and-so. And, you know, he, like, he likes horror. Right. <laughs> so he, like, doesn't really want to do that. But as, like, at the agency, we're all, it's a lot of... A lot of teamwork, and so, you know, mm-hmm. you have to service the client um, and, you know, add any value to their project in ways that you can, mm-hmm. um, like introducing them to, like, financiers or whatever. Right. But, uh, yeah, so it's, like, knowing when to say certain things because, like, mm-hmm. I could read a script and be like, yo, this sucks right. so much. <laughs> but then you're like, oh, well, you know, that's Spike Lee's script, and he's got so-and-so attached to it. And yeah. You're like, yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> like, exactly. Okay, we're going to green light this now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just going to eat my mm. hand for now. Right. <laughs> but, like, so, yeah, that that's the scary thing of, like, the flack. And, and like, mm-hmm. that's something you have to, I think, always be cognizant of, like, where is this project coming from and what is attached to it? Mm-hmm. Um, that's, like, a, something I always I try and figure out before I read a script is, like, why am I reading it? Like, right. is it to help out this client? Is it to sign a new client? Or is it mm-hmm. whatever reason? Um, and that helps kind of give my judgment um, more of, uh, like, it, like, it gears it towards right. um, a more clear opinion mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and one that is not so harsh. <laughs> right, right. Um, I'm down know. easy kind yeah. of thing. So do you want to stay in docs, you think? Or do you want to... Like, if you had to pick one um, doctor, I guess, features or a specific genre of, of feature film, um, you know, have you thought about that? Or is it kind of, like, everything? So I'd say, like, in terms of, like, career goals. Yeah, career like goals. I, exactly. I would want to start up my own kind of creative venture capitalist, if you will. Okay. That, so um, financing? Yeah. So, okay. the, like, three kind of silos of business that interest me the most and, mm-hmm. like, get me going um yeah, is, 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 is like is film financing uh-huh. and then i would say also like music management okay um there's a couple bands that i've like offered advice to and mm-hmm. i'm trying to help like develop their kind of like brand brand i guess if you want to say that um uh-huh. and then the third would be uh like modern art um curation okay so looking at all of it's just pretty, pretty stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I think that's, I think that's great, honestly. Um, film financing, uh, like, have you, for film financing, we can start with that one, I guess. But uh, have you seen any like deals? Like, what, it, what kind of, what's like the typical deal? I mean, I guess it depends, and you kind of uh, said a, a little about it, like with taxes and things like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, it's also like at the heart of. Uh, the reason why I like my department is like the sales department, and one of my minors in college was uh, professional sales. Uh-huh. So like I think that's one of my strengths is like being a good salesman, and like I right. love like the art of the pitch. Yeah. Um, and so like one deal in particular that my department did, headed by our department head Jessica Lacey, mm-hmm. um, was Regina King's One Night in Miami. Oh wow! Yeah, which that's was a huge deal. Uh-huh. Um, and. Shit the kind of creativity that goes behind and like, all right, the movie isn't finished, but it's going to be phenomenal. How do we sell it? Right. And in that scenario, they actually um, sold it by, uh, you know, setting, sending out like three scenes. Mm-hmm. So like about 20 minutes of the film they sent out. Um, so things of like that nature, I find really exciting mm-hmm. and like, like almost a proof of concept kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, selling a feature script off of a short film, right. You know, mm-hmm. like that. And I think I like, that's something that I like doing. And sometimes a creator wouldn't think to do, mm-hmm. you know, if you're working with a filmmaker and you know, 
uh, especially some that I work with now. I helped out on a documentary with a friend of mine, uh-huh. and you know he wants to be a you know comedy TV writer. So right. like <laughs> for this documentary, he's like, I want this off my plate. Right. You know, like right. I just want to be done with it. And so then it's mm. like where I come in and be like, oh, all right, that like let's get this off your plate. How do we do that in a cool? creative way that mm-hmm. sets apart your documentary from someone else's right. um so like not even i guess that's not even like really financing but just like the, the sale mm-hmm. of, of the product um gotcha. and i feel like in all like th- those three like the film music and the m- like modern art ex like curation mm-hmm. is like how do you create a interesting atmosphere for someone to purchase this or to be a part of this experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, Got it. That's what I, I, I like about all of them. Yeah, no, yeah, that, no, I think that's great. And that's good that you know that now and moving towards that. Is like the next step though, you want to become an agent for a few years and then start that. Yeah. And like that's like I mean, the there's so much I don't know. Yeah, um, like the film festivals. Yeah, and also those. just like certain contract work with like, actually putting together um certain deals with studios or like production companies on behalf of your filmmaker Mm -hmm. um so like learning those intricate like actual kind of like legal jargon i think is i lack a lot um i think i got the eye i think i got the pizzazz to sell it but uh like actually putting on my glasses and being a smart person with a red (laughs) pen (laughs) is a lot different than just wearing the glasses right right right. (laughs) Right, you got to know what the words mean yeah so yeah yeah, i definitely want to become an agent um hopefully at icm Mm -hmm. and uh, i think i've got a good trajectory to do so if i keep on doing what i'm doing yeah Um, what is like what what is the path because you know there's certain careers where you're still trying to fucking figure that (laughs) out (laughs) (laughs) but no like There's only, th- like, three rungs to it all. There's okay. an assistant, there's a coordinator, and then there's an agent. That's, gotcha. like, on a very basic level, that's it. Uh-huh. Um, but, I mean, there's, def- like, different tiers of that. You know, there's, like, a senior agent, there's a junior agent. Um, coordinators sometimes cross over into different departments. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so I've been in a couple departments. So I've been in the talent department, now I'm in the international independent department. So I feel like I, I pose myself as a good candidate to, you know, go above the assistant. Mm-hmm. And basically as a coordinator, you're an assistant to the department, gotcha. l- not just like a single agent. Mm, um, okay. So my department, our coordinator like does the bookings on our films. So okay. like the massive deals of like, all right, we sold this film for $1.5 million. We should be getting X amount of money at mm-hmm. this like timeline. Um, is their role. So right. just more responsibility on the business um, okay. end of that. And then I would say, is there a typical like number of years? Like, you know, you're an assistant for, you know, two, three, maybe four years, coordinator for two, three years, and then you're, you're a full-fledged agent? Or Yeah, I mean, or that I think is pretty good, like, window. Uh-huh. I mean, it can definitely be shorter or less, I mean, shorter or more mm-hmm. on all of those things. I mean... I've been I'll be an assistant for three years starting in May. Okay. Um. So I hope I'm only an assistant for another year. Right. Oh, it should be four years. Right. Um, and then yeah, like coordinators, it really comes down to like, are you bringing in, bringing in business? Mm-hmm. Um. So like right now I like have I really think I'm trying, maybe too hard to like you know, acquire, like, my own clients, quote-unquote. Gotcha. Um, right. And work with filmmakers, like, of the same, like, age and, like, insight. Um, mm-hmm. So then when that day comes and, like, they're making a legit feature-length movie, not a short film, like, I can bring them into the company and mm-hmm. hopefully be their, you know, person of representation. Right. Um, so it's, it's, I think it really comes down to that. Like, when can you prove to the company right. that you're bringing in money? Mm-hmm. Um, and that just depends on what you got. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So how would you balance, I mean, right now, let's say you want to bring in people or you would talk to you about your friend before. So how do you, I mean, how do you stay an assistant or coordinator, I guess, right now as an assistant, but also bring in money? Like, how do you manage your time? If, 
you know, somebody was interested in a career. Kind of throws it back to college orientation. Um, okay. I remember my orientation Going leader back, said, yeah. "Yeah, you could have three things in college. You could have good grades, you have a, a good social life, and then you could have good sleep. Mm-hmm. You only have two of the three. Right. Um, so I think it's the same thing. Don't really sleep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So." Yeah, putting a lot of time in, um, you know, always like as an assistant, making sure that the stuff for my boss is taken care of Mm -hmm. Um, and then trying to learn from them, listening in on the phone calls, like hearing the way that they present themselves, the company to clients, to other Mm -hmm. places around town um, and just understanding like where the business is going, you know. Mm-hmm. Sp- like especially on streamers like that's something that's new within the last 15 years right um and just it's really like i always explain to people agency like we don't make anything you know there right. isn't like a, 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 a tangible you know, tangible asset that we create mm-hmm. but like we siphon and we push around information right. which is important because you oh, know definitely. sometimes people don't know how to get something to the finish line and mm-hmm. we provide that right um I think my next step, I mean, or my next question uh, after after that is, I'm curious. Uh, we talked earlier about this, but a few of my friends are moving out to LA, and I'm just, you know, New York or LA. What do you like? How is it different than New York? And like, what do you like about well, if someone's thinking about the move to LA? Right. I know, mean, right now it's you? like I don't even. It's such an interesting time. I uh-huh. mean, everything's closed except for the beach. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, like... How often do you surf or go to the beach? I go at right least, now? like, twice a week now. I mean, some people, okay, like, do heroin, and I do <laughs> surfing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and in Venice Beach, there's a lot of people doing crack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just ignore those people, you know? You keep doing it, you keep doing it. <laughs> um, no, like, I, w- I mean, I th- I, what I always say about L.A. is that, like, None of my friends are from L.A. Mm. <laughs> it's everyone. Right. Most of my good friends out there are from somewhere else. Uh-huh. Bizarrely enough, a lot are from, uh, I guess not bizarre, a lot are from Texas, um, a lot from Maryland, Ohio, like mm-hmm. all over the country. I think right. people that come from, you know, at least my friends, like a stable upbringing and like niceness but like want something more and mm-hmm. like out there and weird and right. not uh usual i think is mm-hmm. what brings people to la what brings people to new york city too right people just want to make it you know like yeah they go out there. have I you mean, seen la la land i love that movie. yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is yeah, yeah. I, I have a deep crush on that film yeah. but like it's like you know you want to work in finance you got to be on wall street like right, you exactly. want it like Hollywood, I think and still believe, is the Wall Street of the entertainment industry. Of course. Um, like, that's where the people are, where the companies are established. Mm-hmm. And so being around that is important if you want to work in it. Um, mm-hmm. But, that's yeah, cool. in terms of, like, moving out now, it's so tough. Like, I have a friend of mine whose little brother wants to be a production assistant um, mm-hmm. here. But, like, I'm just thinking more out there, and it's, like, you know, I don't think... I think it's really tough for someone who doesn't have any experience to get on to those things because right. the, the productions that are happening are way smaller mm-hmm. and more stringent because they got to have all the pr- COVID protocols. Right. Um, and so, yeah, getting your foot in the door, I think, is, is really, really tough now. Especially so now that. with everything going on. Because yeah. Because I, I feel like... That's what I've heard as well, where, you know, the productions, you know, have less people and then they want the more experienced people. Exactly. So if you're coming out of school with like zero experience or a few months, like one internship, mm-hmm. you know, who they're going to pick. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that kind of goes into my next question with how has COVID impacted, you know, your day to day, but also the agencies and like the film industry as a whole. Yeah. I mean, for a while, I mean, thankfully. Thankfully, my department's done pretty good mm-hmm. during uh, all of this. Like yeah. at the beginning, uh, we were s- selling like a lot of films because that's, that's everyone, great. yeah, was really afraid of not having content to put out there. Mm-hmm. And so, some films that we weren't able to sell before COVID because they didn't think they were that good mm-hmm. were then sold during COVID because people came back and like, hey, is that a film still right. <laughs> floating around? Uh-huh. Um, so. 
I mean, that was like from the agency standpoint, um, we saw like a big flux, I think, of selling films. And mm. then like surprisingly enough, I mean, people are still putting money into making films right. um, like down the line. Um, so like putting financing together for a film that's going to be made like next summer and next oh, fall wow. is a lot of what I would say is going on now, mm -hmm. um, which like – you wouldn't think is happening. You're like, right, yeah, I'm I mean, surprised. Yeah. I always tell, and my friends, most of them work in finance, I'm like, yeah, a movie is a terrible investment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But, yeah, like, definitely. so it's even surprising that during a pandemic, people are still, and companies are still mm -hmm. operating on that assumed, um, like, right. return. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the people who invest in movies are, like, either big studios or, you know, if they're not, like, individuals, they just want to be invested in a movie because it's cool or something like that. Yeah. Or they have so much money, they don't give a shit, like, mm -hmm. whatever happens. But, I mean, that... So, have you heard about HBO Max and, like, the streaming at all? Like, yeah. Like, what do you think about that? So, I mean, like, like CAA, they had a pretty uh, aggressive statement um, mm -hmm. saying, that, you know... Because for them, like, in their... Their represent... Like, people they represent like are looking to make money off the back end to make off those box office bonuses. Right. Right. And so that's, what that's HBO, like what Warner brothers has done in getting all those films onto HBO max is just, you know, strip them from that potential money. Um, and like in one sense, like, yes, it sucks that mm. these people aren't going to get money that they thought they should be getting like in any case i don't think that's right right but then you also got to be realistic it's like really rich people right. <laughs> yeah. that are like oh my god i'm not gonna make another million dollars if it doesn't like reach <laughs> this like quota right. um in revenue mm -hmm. so i mean yeah it's i mean frankly i'm just depressed because i love going to the movie theater Right. Like, I love that experience. I love being with people and, mm -hmm. like, going to the theater with my grandmother and then talking afterwards right. and just, like, sitting there and even at a film festival hearing the oohs and the ahs and the laughing and right. the, the shrieks and, like, you know, that – it's like going on a roller coaster. Like, you feel it. And mm -hmm. now when you're in your bed in your underwear underneath all your blankets right. watching a movie – you're not really, it, it hits different. It's different. It yeah, hits no, different. I, I agree with you. I think um, I definitely agree with you on that front where how I look at it is from a distribution standpoint, you know, you have the windows changing as well, you know. Yeah, they're, same they're, day. They're going to be, yeah, exactly, same day, shorter time frame. I feel like the, you know, the huge fans who dress up, who love it, like the mm -hmm. Marvel, the DC will go, you know, but, you know, if I have a streaming service and I'm like, you know, I want to see it, but like, I'm not, I yeah, don't want to go to the theater. Those are like, those are the people I'm scared about. Like shit, they're not going to go to the theaters anymore. Right. But I also look at it from independent filmmaking. I think will, you know, take that place where maybe the windows will be shorter, but they will be like, I was talking to somebody from AMC mm -hmm. and Regal, um, you know, they're looking for more independent films now because yeah. they're scared about the studios are going to just... Because they all have streaming services. Yeah. But, you know, maybe the independent filmmaker doesn't. And, you know, I think filmmaker or the film festivals will become even more relevant now where people will want to buy those films for theaters now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just curious. I'm, you know, that's obviously a guess, but, I mean, I'm curious to see what happens in a year from now. You know. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, there is going to be a saturation of these big studio films on the streaming networks, and, right. like, they are already. Mm -hmm. And so, hopefully, you know, the Netflixes of the world will get stuffed with mm -hmm. that appetite, and then there'll be a resurgence in independent film for something dif different. And that's, like, the whole beauty of independent film is, like, right. it's, you know, low budget, it's creative on a financing standpoint, it's mm -hmm. creative on a, a topic level as well. Um, you know, I think the reason why I love independent films, especially like documentaries, is, you know, a lot of them have like social causes that they bring up and themes that they bring up. Right. Um, and so like there's always gonna be shit in the world. <laughs> and there's right. always gonna Exactly. You're always gonna need people to stand up for what's right on certain 
events that take place in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think independent film lends itself more so to, which Mm -hmm. is, I think, a beautiful thing and a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, the the blockbuster, like, the Marvels of the world, like, they they do in their subliminal ways, but, like, they can't overdo it because then you lose the... um, the entertainment of the, 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 the appeal, yeah, yeah. exactly, um, exactly. No, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I'm curious to. I mean, do you think? I mean, maybe you mentioned it, but I, like, what do you think will happen in like the theater industry, or like, do you have anything? I mean, about, yeah, like, I what, think what are your like thoughts on like right before this with um, like Alamo Draft House, mm-hmm. like I think that was becoming like a really sexy thing. Like that was like. Oh man, like I'm gonna get a membership to this cool bar and movie experience. Mm-hmm. Like that's gonna be my go to Friday night thing. Right. And so I really hope that, you know, when we're allowed to get back in, in the mass of people, like things like that will, you know, bring theaters back to life, will bring people back together. Um and yeah. so I think that like I don't think there will be single like only movie theaters anymore i mm-hmm. think there's gonna be a two-in-one you're right. gonna go to it it's got a bar it's got you know a live act mm-hmm. you know maybe bring back an intermission like right. how yeah. sweet would it be to go to a movie and then in the middle of it there's a bar in the back and then they got a band that goes on for like two songs right no, and then back idea. to the film and right. then it's at the end it's just a bar so you can talk about the film there right um but you know, that's also kind of like all in one thing of maybe that takes away from mm-hmm. like the local downtown or whatever. But that's right. different. But so I, th- I think my prediction is that hopefully we'll see more of, of entities like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That two for one. Make yeah, it no. exciting to go to the movies again. Yeah, no, I think that's definitely, you know, I think that would be great. I mean, I would love that. You yeah. Know? I, I mean, I think that would be really There you go. Poof to the pudding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I mean... I don't know if you're following the streaming wars at all or, or what, like if you're, but I mean, I'm curious to see, you know, with that being said, who comes out on top. I mean, I think Disney plus is going to be, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think they're like, crushing I'm curious. it. Like I'm, I'm like, like, I was, cr- I was like looking at it the other day and I'm, you know, amazed that they're almost going to beat Netflix, but I guess mm-hmm. they have so much content from the past. Where they yeah. Just, so like, yeah. Netflix it. getting all those studio films and right. like, I don't know. Recently, I found myself in like an Amazon tear, and I feel like they have mm, a really good okay, yeah. curation of independent films. Uh-huh. Um, and so, like, it's all about like, wh- and then I think Hulu has like really good TV. Um, so mm. they all kind of have these little different niche niches, mm-hmm. whatever, however you say <laughs> that word. No, you're right. You're um, right. <laughs> uh, so I think uh-huh. that's gonna just become more clear. The longer they're around, it's right. like having a cable mm-hmm. package, you I know. Mean, I mean, yeah, um, I think that's like the future. And right? the, like a certain three. TV network, like you know, AMC Classics. You know, you're gonna get those classic films right. from like the, the the prime era of like the '60s and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then you go to your TBS, and you have the more like current films that are quote unquote classic, and that's right. their brand. So I think that's something we'll start to kind of garner and understand the longer they're around mm-hmm. is like, well, what does Netflix represent? It represents like diverse, new, hot, big budget topics. Mm-hmm. And then maybe the Amazon of the world are a little bit more of the art house, independent films, um, like something like that. And so right. we'll be able to kind of put them in the silos again, as opposed mm-hmm. to just like having a, all the stuff thrown at us at yeah. once. No, I and like, more. even like Shudder is a horror uh, streaming platform. So they've already created their own um, like competitive advantage slash like brand of like, mm-hmm. when you go to this site, this is what you're going to get. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, yeah, we'll just see more of that. Disney yeah. Plus, I feel like kind of has like a very family oriented background behind yeah. it um mm-hmm. like star wars with mandalorian and all of their like having studio ghibli underneath or that's hbo max right um but like yeah they all find their own mm-hmm. ways yeah no I, yeah no i agree with you on on that um you know speaking of helping your friends and, and whatnot so you 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 kind of explained to me before about cuddle buddies but do you want to talk a little bit about that or yeah like what i mean so there's a few 
people in my life who are friends, and I guess I like to call them clients. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, this one film, Cuddle Buddies, uh, uh-huh. was written, produced, directed by a buddy of mine, Jordan Roman. Awesome. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I have a, f- a friend who works at Sundance, who works for some of the lead programmers, so mm. I spoke with her about the film, and then, you know, connected uh, Jordan and said programmer um, together, where he then submitted directly to her, and Ultimately, didn't get into the festival, but, you know, we got a nice note mm. directly from her as opposed to some generic note. Um, right. So, yeah, I've been, like, outside of my assistant duties, like, try to take on some agent, like, projects. Right. Um, That's where the no sleep comes in. Right? Yeah, no <laughs> sleep. Uh, but, like, one that I'm, like, really excited about, I'm working on now, who's actually a client of ICM's, um, uh, is uh, a filmmaker by the name of M. Weinstein. And okay. they uh, have this film called, uh, in France, Michelle is a man's name. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about a trans man okay. who goes back home into the Midwest and, you know, rekindles with their father and at a strip club. And okay. kind of <laughs> right. yeah. awkward and intense and, and like, mm-hmm. you know, whole blender of emotions that that can be for all those of people. Yeah. Um, and so i am been helping with coordinating the filmmaker M to uh, a publicist who like kind of knows the the realm of um, the Academy race mm-hmm. because this film won at Outfest. Okay. And yeah, so we're just trying to blast it out to all the Academy members and get their eyes on it and hopefully it gets on a short list to then be in contention for the Oscar race. Um, mm-hmm. And so like, yeah, just like things like that. Um, it, you know, I didn't know who the publicist was before, but I knew an agent in my department represented uh, Guy Nativ, okay. who uh, directed Skin, um, mm-hmm. which was at first a short film and then the feature length with Jamie Bell. Um, I knew that he knew the process and the path, and so I called him up and got some advice and found out about this publicist and then mm-hmm. was able to connect the filmmaker with them. And now I'm like, you know, a part of this team. Right, yeah, no, that's In awesome. the Oscar race, which is like fucking nuts. Yeah, that is <laughs> nuts, yeah. I mean, what it, for me, I mean, what it sounds like too is, you know, it's a big relationship business. You yeah. Know? Like this person knows this person, this person knows yeah, that person. Yeah, in a, not... Like it, I hate saying this, but like currency is relationships mm-hmm. and the people you know. Right. Um, like I said, my younger cousins when they're having a tough time at like on tests or like stuff like that, I'm like, mm-hmm. it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, just to wrap it up, I like to ask all my guests, um, mm-hmm. you know, your top three movies or. I mean, sometimes oh, you okay. can't do top three, top five. I got. I mean, I definitely got top two. Uh, favorite movie of all time is Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, directed by Wes Anderson. Okay. Starring Bill Murray and Owen Wilson. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I got this watch, light blue and yellow. <laughs> I love Wes. He's like, my, my favorite director, Wes Heck Anderson. yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're Grand an independent Budapest, film, yeah. he is God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, so th- he's always been an inspiration. I've seen like all, every single one of his movies probably like four times. Except right. for Bottle Rocket. Yeah. Wasn't, like, <laughs> Obviously, his first film, but like, mm-hmm. uh, so that's number one film, like aesthetically pleasing. It's like the it makes you cry, it makes you laugh. It's got action in it. The first mm-hmm. time I watched it was with my dad, okay. and we started watching it like five minutes into the film, and we watched the whole thing. And my dad's like, "Wow, that was that was really good." He goes, "But we didn't start it from the beginning. Like, do you want to watch it again?" I was like, "Yeah," <laughs> <laughs> and so we watched the movie. All right all the way through again mm-hmm. and I only just missed five minutes. Wow. Um, so that, and like in seeing different things every time, like, Oh, in that mm-hmm. corner, there's like a lizard on his back <laughs> as they're about to go do this like heist. And, um, mm-hmm. so that's my favorite film. Then second favorite film would be, um, the big Lebowski. Okay. Classic. <laughs> yeah. The dude, the, the dude. dude. <laughs> yeah. It's just your opinion, man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, like, no, I love that. That's, that's a good pick. Yeah, I mean, a lot of like these two movies, especially like, like family resonating. Um, like my uncle, who's NYPD cop, uh, like, I'm, I'm like the liberal, liberal kid in California, <laughs> so yeah. we don't always see eye to eye, but like, mm-hmm. we both love this movie, and that's what mm-hmm. I think is like 
the beautiful and amazing thing about films is like you can have a completely different perspective of someone else, but then just totally connect mm -hmm. on this beautiful piece of artwork. It brings uh, people together, yeah. Exactly. Sure. Uh, so Big Lebowski would be number two. <sighs> and then number three, this is just like a wild card. I saw it recently and really enjoyed it, was this uh, film Arkansas. Arkansas, um, yeah, yeah, I watched yeah. it. Yeah. Written and directed by Clark Duke, who's a client of ICM's. Okay, um, nice. And like, I just like Vince Vaughn is just like hitting it all around these days, mm -hmm. like with serious roles and like True Detective and then yeah. like this movie brawl that came out recently mm -hmm. but like we always know him as like the funny guy from wedding crashes and stuff and then in arkansas he's kind of like a multi-layered like he's a drug dealer like right. he's a drug lord but mm -hmm. like with ethics um so i think that's like a really like interesting concept that they play with mm -hmm. um and i think it's shot in film so it's a pretty like cool looking film mm -hmm. and yeah like the vignette storytelling it's like very reminiscent of uh like a uh, Tarantino film, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, like, I get, and then number four, like, throw in Inglorious Bastards. Of course, like, yeah. All right, all right. Love yeah. that film and a huge crush on Brad Pitt. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, that's uh, I'd say those. Those, those are my, my top top four. Not gonna okay. be five or three. Yeah, yeah. In the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perfect. No, I mean that that sounds great. Um, you know, I, I mean, uh, that's. That's that's a good list, you know, and nice. um, yeah, I mean that's pretty much all the questions I have. I want to thank Danny in the booth, um, first live studio. Appreciate it. Thank um, you. Yeah, and um, yeah, Super Lost Coffee too. Shout out to sponsors one day, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, thanks for having me. This is uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, of course. No, thanks yeah. for coming from Jersey. Jeez, that's a hike. <laughs> Hey, anything to get away from my parents. <laughs> <way>, but <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Remind myself I'm adult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. thanks for coming. Totally. Thanks for stopping by. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Good, to, good to be by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. Cut. <laughs> that's <what I> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Yeah.